Hey everybody, this is the first of many tutorials that we'll be covering um, different modeling techniques. So today we are going to make cylindrical objects using this palette here, uh, which is our NURBS palette control. So here we have things like extrude, lathe, loft, sweep, and uh, the NURBS menu is about uh, non-uniform non rational B splines. You can look that up to see what it means. But what we're going to do is create something like this pawn. All right, so let's go into it. So first of all, uh, for this, what I did was I just searched online for an image that I wanted to use to trace. And this is this pawn image that I thought was really good. And it's good because uh, I'm seeing it sort of at eye level, meaning I can really see the profile really clearly. So in order to use that, what we need to do is first navigate to our viewport and this tab up top goes to multiple viewports. And I'm just gonna select this one down here, which is our front view, click on that same corner here, all right? And then what we wanna do is configure this so we can see that image in the background. So the way to do that is go to options in the viewport menu, configure, and then here we're gonna search for back. And under back, we can go to image and I'll select an image and choose the pawn image. All right, so when you pop this in, what you want to do is whatever you're going to trace, which we're going to trace this image and then make an object out of that tracing. So I want to align this along the green axis, which is the Y axis. In order to do that, you have to use the offset tabs down here in the attributes manager. So if I click this, increase the numbers, I'm going to get closer and closer to the middle of that pawn object. So that looks pretty good, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is use this spline tool, this pen spline tool to trace a line around my object. So the way that I like to use this tool is first in the attributes manager, I just change it from Bezier curves to linear. And the reason I do that is I like to have a little bit more control over where I place the dots and then control the arcs later on. So if I zoom in a little closer, I'm just going to start by trying to get the dot right exactly on the green axis, the Y axis for the first mark, the dot here, and follow it along the major points of emphasis on this object, okay? Not worrying about the curves right now, I'm just trying to get the major um, changes of direction. It's kind of what I'm looking for here, all right? So something like this. Now we get to the bottom. You notice that in perspective, we see that cylinder as a curved bottom, but what I'm gonna do is click the edge here and then go straight across, because if I draw that as a curve, it's gonna change the form of it. So the bottom, it's gonna be flat on the bottom. I'm gonna make it like that. All right, so now what I've drawn, if we click on the spline view here, and just go to multiple views, you can see what I've drawn is actually half of the, of the pawn, right? And it's very geometric right now. So what I'm gonna do is go back into the menu and just select my um, uh, move tool, all right? And make sure that down here, the points menu is on, okay? So this is the objects menu, this is the points menu, all right? And with the move tool selected, just make sure that you have the spline selected in your objects manager. And then you should be able to go to each one of these dots. Oh, I'm sorry, first what we're gonna do, before we do that, uh, I'm gonna go to the type down here in the object properties. And I'll change it from linear to the Bezier curves. And you'll notice that automatically it applies curves to those um, points. And now all we need to do is click on each one and just make some adjustments. So I'm gonna move this one in and make it more flat like that. Uh, if you click on one, you can extend the handlebars to make the curve longer. You can also click so if you click the Y axis, you can move it up only. If you click the X axis, you can move it to the right or left only. Or you can click the, the blue one, which moves both of them, and you can just kind of align this. So what I'm gonna do is just try to get this to be as close to the shape and form that I can get using these dots and mimic that curve. That one looks pretty good. I'm just gonna lower it here, extend the curve a little bit more. So you're gonna to try to get it as close as you can to the original. It looks like I'm doing pretty well here. I like that so far. 
Okay, not so bad. I think we're just going to change this bottom one, bring it in a little bit, and move it closer this way. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so once I'm happy with the curve, if you go back to your perspective view, and then go to your nerves menu and just drop in a lathe object. Once that's in place, just simply take the spline and put it on the lathe object, and instantly you'll have the form. It wraps that line around the object, and you get this form. All right. So one thing I want to note about this is to make sure that your X and Y, let's just do this. We'll do multiple views. We'll rotate this a little bit so we can see the top. And I just want to show you this simultaneously. Go to multiple views. And let me just move here. Okay. So if we were to take this point, let me grab my move tool. And if I move this to the left, notice what ha happens to the top screen here. It is going to open up, right? So that creates a hole. So that's why you want to make sure that you have your lines directly on the Y so that you close your object in total. Okay, so there we have it. There is our first object. If I wanted to add some uh, materials to this uh, quickly, just add, uh, grab my content browser. So let's just go here. I already did a search where you could just type in marble, right? And I'll grab this green marble, that looks pretty good. Drag it on here. Uh, I'm gonna bring in a floor and I'm gonna drop the floor down to the level of the pawn. There we go. And then lastly, I'm gonna bring in a physical sky, give it a little bit of lighting so you can see what this thing would actually look like uh, compared to our photo. So here we go, render it out. It's looking pretty good. And compared to the photo, not too bad. Obviously different lighting, studio lighting here. But there we have a good representation of using the lathe tool to create 3D objects in space.